For now, though, for now, break-even problems is where it's at. Okay, here's how these work. Whenever we're doing break-even problems, the same equation is going to come in. We're going to write this equation at the top. We're going to use it every time. Here's how it works. We have setup plus our cost equals our revenue. And what we're attempting to figure out here is if I have some business startup costs, whether it's buying a building, whether it's buying machinery or supplies or whatever, if you take that plus what you spend per item and set that equal to how much you charge per item, you can figure out how many things you have to sell before you actually start making money. And that's kind of important. It's going to take you a long time to start making money. You might run out of money before you ever, you know, get going too far. Well, it depends on what the thing is. So sometimes there's a lot of cost involved in things. So like, for instance, and we'll talk about some specifics here once we get in a little further. So I've had some experiences with people in different businesses to kind of see how this works. So here's how this works. Okay, we're going to become a car dealer. Not bad. We can buy cars from the warehouse for 7000 each, and the building for our dealership costs a million dollars. We're going to sell cars for $38,000 each. How many cars must we sell to break even? Okay, first thing. X is going to be our cars, okay? How many we're selling, how many we're purchasing, whatever it happens to be. My cost is the million dollars to buy the building plus 7000 dollars for each car I'm buying. And I just want to do this on the first couple to kind of get you used to it. Once we get you used to it, it won't be bad. Zach, stay with me. Oh, Zach, stay with me. I'm going to get to that. Yes, it will be. And then my... Okay. We'll get you a different one and get you set. So, when we go to do this, my setup... And like I said, we'll only do this on the first couple, but I want you to have a good example to go back and look at. Would be the million dollars that I had to spend to start on this. What we'll do after Oh my. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't catch that on here. So, our setup's a million for our building. Plus, our cost, <laughs> like Marcus was mentioning before, is 7,000 times X, because the cost depends on how many cars we buy. Okay, if we buy one car, it only costs us 7,000. If we buy 10 cars, it's going to cost us 70. And that's going to equal our revenue, which is us getting $38,000 times every car that we sell. So what my job now is, is to figure out what X equals? How many cars I have to sell? Not yet. Closer. Notice, notice that my X's are on different sides of the equal. So to get them all together, we do. So how can I move this minus? Okay, that's fine. That's absolutely fine. Well, I think we might know to work that out. Okay, so we moved the 7,000 over, so now all of our X is together on the same side. Uh huh. Yes. Yes, yes. And then now we're going to divide. And you can, you can get decimals, but here's, here's what we're looking at. So I get this, and I get this decimal. Now, I don't think they're going to let us purchase or sell a quarter of a car, okay? Wouldn't be very useful. Well, 0.26, a partial car. Right. We have to, in this case, be realistic and say, if I only sold 32, I'd still be short money. So in this case, whenever these occur, I have to round up. 
That I agree, but let me ask you a question. Okay, let's say we sold 32 cars. So if I plug the 32 in, here's what. Correct. Ah, but if I sold less, I wouldn't be breaking even. I'd still be losing money. So that's the weird thing about this, because we've been taught forever, if it's below 0.5, I round down. But in not these cases, hard. well, but not when it comes to reality and type story problems. We're always going to round up. Okay, so I need to sell 33 cars to be able to break even. And that's going to be true as we go through all the different types of these. So for instance, now we get real funny. We're going to manufacture what's it. What's it? I'm, I'm going to be keeping an eye out. Okay, so here, let's try to jump right into the setting up of this. How much is it going to cost us in advance before we even start making what's it? $4,000 because we have a machine we have to buy. So that's my setup. My cost, how much am I paying for each what's it that I'm making? Five dollars. And that goes with X because X, they can be any what's it you want them to be. So what we're going to do then is we're going to set that equal to our revenue. How much are we making for every what's it? Twelve dollars. And you'll start to say, oh, this kind of sets up like the last one did. I have X's on both sides. So how am I going to get all the X's together? Minus the five. So like, okay, so four thousand equals seven X. And what's that last step always going to be? Exactly. Because when I punch it in, I get a decimal again. So what are we actually going to use for our answer? 572. What's it? But you start to see the setup works the same. So those of you that are creatures of habit, this is great. Because you just get to keep doing the same thing each time. For our fishers out there. Just today and a little bit tomorrow. So today we have bobbers. No, there'll be when we have a quiz, there'll be on there. No, we're gonna do one tomorrow too. Okay. So not till next week. Okay. What's our setup cost gonna be on this one? Eighty-five hundred. Okay. Yeah. Right now we're just basically putting the accents. So we're we're doing the other parts down below. So like at the cost and revenue, we're actually doing those down here and creating the problem at the same time. So how much does this fiber cost us to make? Seven dollars of materials and labor. That is going to equal our revenue. How much money do we get for every bobber we sell? Well. There's a lot of costs that go into business that sometimes you don't think about. That's one of the things we're going to talk about here in a minute. So just like before, I want to move the 7x over here. I want all my x's together. Finally, we get one that goes in evenly. 5, 5, 5. We gotta sell 1,700 bobbers before we break even. That's a lot of bobbers. 
I mean, just think about how long it would take us to really make it like a dollar or two on this one. That takes, that's a long time. Okay? So think about how cheaply they must be able to make them if they can sell them for that. Really, really, really cheap. It's true. All right. One more. Then I want you to try something. Number four, something we all are interested in. We are going to manufacture Ferraris. To set up our factory, it will cost us five million three hundred forty-six thousand dollars. Yeah. So our setup is five million. That's a large piggy bank. How much? How much is it going to cost us for each one? Cost seventy-three thousand five hundred dollars. It costs us for each one we're going to sell. And how much are we going to get for every one we sell? One hundred forty-six thousand times X, because we don't know how many we're going to sell yet. Let's see how long this is going to take. That's a lot of money to put out. Well, in a normal economy, if you have some money to work with, or some properties, or you own a house, you own something else, sometimes you can put that up as collateral to get a loan for something like this. Now, this would be somebody with a lot of money. I mean, they're not just going to loan you $5.4 million just because. Because people actually worry about getting their money back, which is why people charge interest. When that oops. Yeah, and that can even take a while though to get this kind of money. So, when we divide by the 72,500, how many of these do we have to sell? I think it's more than eight. I think we lost a zero somewhere. <laughs> Or oh, maybe not. What did you get? What did you get? What did you get? Yeah, we we lost a zero somewhere. Let me get your calculator. Would it be ninety-one? I'm getting seventy-four. <laughs> I'm so wrong. Yeah. Okay. So five, three, four, six with three zeros divided by seventy two thousand five hundred. We'd have to sell seventy four Ferraris, and that would actually take longer than you might think. Because not a lot of people are in the market for that. Well, so now when some of you have been asking, you know, like, either where do you get the money or how does any of this stuff start? A lot of times, like, you wouldn't start necessarily as a Ferrari dealer. Maybe you'd start with, like, some used cars. And then you build up to, like, new cars, but a little bit less pricey. And you can build into something like that. Sure, why not? They can. Okay. Now, one other thing.